our keynote speaker, we promised you that we have a special speaker uh, to kick off the afternoon here for us, and we really do. We're very fortunate not only to be back uh, in the Capital Visitor Center, uh, uh, for the first time since the pandemic, we're able to do this event here. Uh, but also, we're able to bring up someone who's been a very special, special ally and champion for uh, public knowledge as an organization, for the work we do in the public interest. Uh, and that is Congresswoman Eshu from the 16th Congressional District of California. Californians here? Anyone come over? We got a few. Okay, excellent. Um, if you don't know Ms. Eshu, uh, you've missed, missed an amazing over two decade career of representing not only Silicon Valley and uh, great researchers and companies uh, from Northern California, but someone who's been a champion for an open internet, open technology, and like we talked about this morning, public interest values as technology develops and innovates. Um, I can list a bunch of things from her work on privacy, from her work on next generation 911, uh, fair billing on, on communications tools, and, and very important uh, for public knowledge and neutrality. Um, Congresswoman Eshu is the first woman to be the, the leader and the chair of the Communications Information Subcommittee here in the House of Representatives, and uh, uh, her leadership has always guided uh, policy in the direction of what's good for the public interest. And that's why in 2013, we gave her uh, uh, what we can at Public Knowledge, our only award, she, we gave her one of our IP3 awards, she, she's just been an amazing champion. Um, I'm just, I know you've announced you're retiring soon, but we know you haven't stopped working, you're still working hard, you've been a champion this year for, uh, for AI, uh, emerging technology research, uh, and uh, we just can't wait to see what else you do uh, with this last year's work. So thank you for being here, and please welcome our keynote speaker to talk about emerging technology and policy, Congresswoman Anna Eshley. Suddenly, everything we needed, 
or wanted was in the palm of our hands and um, available anywhere. Much of this innovation occurred in my congressional district, uh, the Silicon Valley, giving me a front row seat uh, as the startups of yesterday have become the tech giants of today. I've seen how public policy interacts uh, with innovation and how the decisions Congress makes and the uh, decisions that Congress has not made uh, can affect society. We've learned a lot of lessons over the years. We've learned that we must always uh, protect consumers first and foremost. We've learned to prevent uh, market concentration because competition breeds innovation. We've learned that technology is both a consumer issue and very importantly, a national security issue. Now we need to take those lessons, in my view, and apply them to how we continue to regulate uh, technology today. Today we find ourselves in the middle of another technological revolution that requires congressional attention. Artificial intelligence is not a new technology. It's been with us for decades, but the emergence of large language models, frontier models, generative AI, uh, and generative AI is new. And uh, this presents both promise and peril uh, for our society. AI can improve drug discovery and medical treatments, speed up disaster response, and help us combat climate change. The unsafe use of AI can exacerbate existing inequities in society, and there are many, as we all know, or fuel misinformation, something we live with every day and is taking a toll on our society and damaging our democracy. It's critical that we create guardrails to protect consumers, protect our national security, and encourage competition. We also have to ensure that America continues to lead the world in innovation. There are three things that Congress can and should do, in my view, right now, to address the promise and the peril of AI. The first is to democratize AI. AI research uh, and development requires three main ingredients, good data, computing power, and people. These are very expensive resources and are currently accessible only to the largest technology companies, many of them located in my congressional district. All sectors of, of society. We have many sectors that comprise our uh, society, including the medical sector, the academic sector, the small business sector, the nonprofit sector, and very importantly, the public sector deserve access to these critical resources. This will enable researchers and innovators across the United States to develop AI tools to bolster our national security, enhance our economic competitiveness, and improve society in numerous ways. That's why I think it's so important for Congress to pass my legislation, the Create AI Act. It's bipartisan, it's bicameral legislation, which establishes uh, something that's called the National AI Research uh, Resource, um, the NAIR, uh, a shared cyber research infrastructure that will provide these necessary resources to all sectors of our society. I've worked with, uh, over the last five, six years, uh, with the um, uh, Stanford uh, Human-Centered um, AI Institute, and, um, and a really incredible, I think, one of the godmothers of uh, AI, uh, Fei Fei Li, Dr. Li. Uh, I think that this effort is really fundamental and critical to ensuring that we develop AI that is safe, that is secure, and that is trustworthy. Uh, President Biden recognized the need for this and directed uh, the National Science Foundation to stand up a pilot there. They've been hard at work uh, 
uh, and they've made excellent progress in a short period of time. Just last month, NSF made their first 35 awards of computational time to researchers across a variety of organizations and universities. Congress also needs to address the issue of AI-generated content or deep fakes. AI-generated content has proliferated online with the in, uh, innovation of generative AI. It can provide benefits and enhanced creativity and expression for society, but, can, but it can also create widespread size, uh, societal confusion as it becomes nearly impossible to differentiate between what's real and what's fake. This has significant consequences for society, uh, for our democracy and our economy. My bill, the Protecting Consumers from Deceptive AI Act, will help solve this prob problem uh, by directing NIST to facilitate the development of standards to label and identify AI-generated content. It will also require AI developers and deployers to label audio and visual content generated by their AI tools. Uh, this scientific and standards-based approach uh, will ensure that consumers are informed about the content they're interacting with online and helping to protect them uh, from fraud and the spread of misinformation. Uh, the American people deserve to be protected and to know, as I said, what's fake and what's real. Lastly, Congress must protect Americans from the national security risks associated with uh, AI, particularly with regard to biosecurity. I served for almost uh, a decade on the House Intelligence Committee. So I, I know uh, very well the enormous challenges we face in the national security uh, arena. The uh, convergence of biology and AI presents stark examples of the promise and the peril of AI. Uh, AI has helped uh, many researchers better understand the world uh, of biology, including the prediction of protein structures. It also has the potential to exacerbate biosecurity risks by enabling uh, the development of novel pathogens. I introduced the Artificial Intelligence and Biosecurity Risk Assessment Act to study the potential threats of AI on America's biosecurity so Congress can be informed of any necessary interventions. Technology moves very fast, and Congress cannot be complacent on these is issues. Obviously, in the, just in outlining some of these challenges, uh, much is at stake. We're facing a technological revolution similar in impact to the inter introduction of the internet or the invention of the smartphone. In this moment, I think it's critical for us to be aware of what's at stake. We have to understand both uh, AI's promise and its peril, learn from the lessons of the past, and develop guardrails that protect society first and foremost without stifling our nation's greatest asset, our people and their innovative uh, spirit. We have to work together to ensure we continue uh, to innovate, stay competitive, uh, protect consumers, protect our national security, and guarantee everyone can benefit from the tremendous promises of AI. We have to work with nations around the world to advance AI governance that reflects our values, protects democracy, and respects the rule of law. As I close my remarks, uh, I want to thank Public Knowledge uh, again and again, not only for hosting this wonderful event, um, this important event, but for your extraordinary work and partnership spanning my entire service in Congress. I still have time before my, uh, uh, my uh, uh, term is up uh, and my service in the Congress. Uh, you know the uh, 
the press has their own story and they stick to it. And uh, they, uh, you know, they write the, you know, the fleeing from the Congress and everything that's attached to that. Uh, I've reminded them during the interviews uh, that they've had with me about my, uh, not only my service in Congress, but my retiring from the Congress, that I've never run away from anything. And I'm not running away from the Congress. The Congress is, uh, especially the House of Representatives, is the House of the people. And uh, I, I hope that, um, you know, that this legislation uh, that I've uh, presented to you that we're working on uh, reflects the values of what uh, public knowledge has worked so hard on uh, over the years. So when I say it's an honor to be with you, I couldn't mean that more. Uh, I'm very hopeful about the uh, Create AI Act uh, because it is uh, bipartisan and uh, uh, bicameral. Uh, and that these values and that the challenges that we have to meet in order to advance, um, uh, you know, to meet the challenges um, will really bolster our democracy that is, um, uh, you know, we, we, every generation has the responsibility uh, to protect. So thanks for having me with you. Uh, I'm going to leave for the airport shortly, uh, fly back to my uh, a highly distinguished congressional district. Uh, it is. It really is. You know, my colleagues give me a bad time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You always say that about your district. I said because it's a fact. It's a fact. It's the most distinguished congressional district in the country. And I, uh, I am very proud that when I was uh, first elected uh, to represent the district, and it still remains the fact, the first woman to ever since our country was born to represent this district and the first Democrat. So um, I leave that uh, Chris, thank you again for your superb leadership. I think Senator Kennedy would be very proud.